Hi. I don't really like cheap hidden gem videos because there's always something wrong. One of four things is always wrong with a cheap hidden gem video. That's why I've created my own. I've curated my list of nine. No more than nine because fuck ten. Top nine. Cheap hidden gem videos. Actual cheap hidden gems. Before I go into the list, I really want to specify what my beef is with cheap hidden gem videos that have been going around. Number one one is that they're not really that cheap. Some of these fragrance reviewers, they sit there in front of the massive wall of collection and, 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 and they spend like maybe five, six hundred dollars for a bottle of niche fragrance. So maybe to them, a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks ain't shit, but a hundred bucks is expensive. Maybe even 60 bucks is expensive. 50 bucks is expensive, you know? So it's technically not cheap. It, I mean, cheap is a comparison thing. It's a relative sort of measure. That's one of the problems with it. And one of the other things that's an issue with cheap hidden gem videos is that whilst they may be cheap sometimes not really that hidden like you've got things like I don't know you've got things like Bentley for men intense which is cheap and I gotta smell it now Mm, oh my god, as you can see, I like it also and it's a gem But it's not hidden because everybody fucking talks about this and every man and his dog and their cat and the rodents that live in their backyard knows about this or they know about this which is Bentley for men absolute they know about this one too so they know about these and then they also know about what's the other what's the other perennial favorite for cheap hidden gems is this one right here this is Encre Noir uh, everybody everybody knows this one they also know this one Encre Noir a la extreme and they also know this one which is uh, Encre Noir Sport okay yes good cheap yes tick gems yes tick hidden no not really because everyone like I said, everybody talks about them already. Number, which brings me to my next point, which is number three, is that sometimes fragrance reviewers get two out of the three, right? Which is, you know, that they're cheap, that they're hidden, because, you know, not many people have talked about them. And there's a reason for that. It's because they're not gems. They're actually really terrible smelling fragrances. Just because they're cheap and nobody knows about them doesn't make them a gem automatically. So you really need to think about these. And once in a very short time, a reviewer will come up and make some recommendations on cheap, hidden, actual gems, which are so difficult to find, uh, especially in my area of the world, that it just makes it like almost impossible. And the shipping on those ones actually makes it not cheap anymore, right? And I don't want to put that down, put that money down on, on a blind buy like that. So my list that I've curated is cheap, yes, hidden, for the most part, yes. Are they gems? I think so, yes. And they are very easy to find. You'd be able to find them on any online discounters at, at a very reasonable price as well. So let's kick off. First one on this list is this one right here. This is a Biblos um, Fusion. That's what it's called, Biblos Fusion. I picked it up recently. It's, uh, it's a nice sort of blue color and it does sort of give me this aquatic vibe as well. Mm, a very cool bottle. It's got bergamot in the top black pepper and oud don't worry uh, the oud in here is almost not noticeable but it's but it's there still it's mostly bergamot black pepper and this sort of funny aquatic vibe which sort of gives me the feeling that i thought originally when i smelled this i thought it was from the mid mid 2000s or something like that but it was actually released i think in 2013. one of the cool things about this is that the bottle comes with a metal plaque no such thing as a as a shitty little sticker but one of the areas where they crapped out was the atomizer it's not really that great but it does smell great and it does last a long time. So I consider this a cheap hidden gem that not many people talk about. And what did I pay for this? Like 35 bucks for full presentation delivered from America to Australia. That's pretty good. That's Australian dollars as well. Okay. And the next one that I picked up recently is this one right here. It is fuckinable. That's what it's called. I'm gonna zoom in as close as I can. Is that still gonna focus? Focus. God damn you. Uh, there, you can see it. Fuckinable. That's what it's called. And for and for like the twenty odd bucks that I paid for this fifty mil bottle, you get yourself a nice bottle. You get yourself a somewhat sort of hefty metallic cap, and you also get a pressurized atomizer which is awesome 
and the juice inside is really really nice as well and that's what counts and it's a really nice uplifting fresh almost herbal herbal citrusy fresh spring daytime scent right here in a bottle very nice i love it and i'm really really liking it even more and I, as i overspray when i when i wear things i always overspray when i wear things i find that it does last a long time and it does develop as well it's got it's got malt it's multifaceted let's say really good one fasonable fuckingable fucking able whatever you want to call it it's really nice it's a really cheap one and not too many people have mentioned this as far as i know now the next one you may have heard a few other reviewers talk about in their cheap hidden gem sort of uh, videos but i'm going to mention it i'm going to mention it for one reason only and that is because it's been discontinued and I don't know whether or not we're going to have a Midnight in Paris kind of uh, scenario where it was the same price. It's currently at the same price as what Midnight in Paris used to be. Uh, we don't want that to sort of creep up. But I don't think it will because the bottle is absolutely horrible. It is Michael Jordan legend. This one right here with the one of the worst bottle designs I've ever seen. It looks like a penis with ears. I don't know why this was even green lighted. Mike, how how could you how could you let this pass i don't understand i don't understand anyway this is uh the one that gets often compared to uh bond number no. nine's new harlem i think and rush house man because it's a sweet sort of coffee fragrance latte um sort of vanilla as well in there and it is very good for a or very suitable let's say for a uh, an autumn sort of daytime and it's a quite long lasting as well so yeah there you go 20 bucks for a 100 mil bottle uh, that's that's pretty good and that's at retail uh, not even at a discounter so so yeah grab it because it has been discontinued uh, and it is again uh, still a relatively uh, hidden and still very cheap and i think it's a gem as well now the next one I think I'm going to cop a bit of uh, flack for mentioning is this one right here because it is a CK fragrance. It is this one. It is CK's 2. CK2. I like this one. I don't care it's a CK. I really like it. It's sort of, it's very, it's, 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 what's this fragrance like? This is like what if you crushed a rock which was heavy in minerals and shoved it into the molecules of water that's what this would sm smell like it's completely synthetic there's nothing natural about this scent but it is very different and i love the bottle design it's really cool as well the, the way that it sits there upside down and i think on me it lasts for a very long time as well and it kind of smells like mineralic water minerally water with with sort of some sweet facets some sort of aquatic facets um because like i said it smells like water but not really a sea water not really your typical aquatic as well so ck2 very nice one also being discontinued so it might be getting harder to find but then again this is a ck and no one really cares about them so you still may be able to pick this up at, at a really bargain basement price because it's actually pretty damn good even if it is a ck next one is another recent pickup and i am very happy with this blind buy and that is because i generally don't like rose and i didn't expect there to be this much rose in this fragrance because it said it was royal oud this one right here royal oud that focus there it is very nice bottle uh, but i think they've just cheaped out on the cap because the cap's plastic but you do get a really nice atomizer here as well mm. it's got a very aerated sort of rose at the top and it's it's anchored it's got a little bit of smokiness inside as well and it's got that oud that is anchoring it now the oud is not very funky there's no stank in here there's no medicinal sort of qualities to the oud it's a very aromatic very tame sort of oud as well but it's not sweet so it's not very designery either and the smokiness i think subtracts from any sweetness that's been brought forth by this rose and the rose like i said it's like a surround sound kind of rose as well quite high quality for the price it, this is this was 50 bucks 50 bucks australian delivered uh and that was from uh, an online discount and, and I'm very happy with this. It does last for quite a while as well. So um, yeah, Korloff Royal Oud, another cheap hidden gem. Check it out. Now we're getting to number six 
and one from a house that is, I think, for the most part slept on, but for this fragrance, it may, it may have had some hype back in the day, but I think it's really died down. But this fragrance is still around and it hasn't been reformulated. It still performs like a beast. It is an Oriental Spicy. It is Jaipur de Boucheron. And the one I've got here is the Eau de Parfum version. Now, the Eau de Parfum version is the version that I would recommend over the Eau de Toilette. It's just got that much more depth in it. It lasts forever. And one thing I should mention is that I, I wore this in Singapore in hot and humid weather, and it actually worked quite well, but not to overspray because it can get quite cloying. Uh, most of the time on a cold winter's day, this goes actually pretty good as well. So again, Jaipur de Boucheron Eau de Parfum, uh, I think there'll be plenty of uh, descriptions and reviews on this already because it's been around for quite a while. And um, as you can see, I, I'm almost done with this bottle. Uh, I haven't really touched it recently, but it is still, every time I pick it up, it's still a magnificent fragrance. And I have been complimented on this. It's almost like a, like a powdery, uh, facet to it as well like a baby powder kind of facet but that is really uh, balanced by the uh, vanilla that is in here and it's not like a bourbon kind of vanilla not not a boozy kind of vanilla it's it's more of a, a clean sort of white cotton shirt kind of vanilla so yeah Jaipur de Boucheron uh, Eau de Parfum check it out. Next one we're getting to is Vera's Wangs. I mean, Vera Wang for men. Uh, apparently Will Smith wears this. Will Smith doesn't wear this. Will Smith's worth like hundreds and millions of dollars. He doesn't wear a $25 uh, a bottle fragrance uh, by, by Vera Wang nonetheless. But the bottle is nice. The smell is actually pretty good. Uh, and a lot of people might say that it has a resemblance to Tom Ford for men. Of course, uh, I don't see that resemblance because the quality difference is pretty large in this case but then again this is I'm not saying that this is bad quality this is actually really good uh, for the price of $25 it is very good the only detractor from this one is that it doesn't last very long but at $25 a bottle you could literally spray half of it on yourself at one application and you'll still be all right so yeah Vera Wang for men Check that. Now we're getting to the tail end and my really secret cheap hidden gems. I've got two left and I'm gonna show you why I've left them to the very last. So this first one, or uh, well, let's say number eight in the list is this one right here. This is uh, Black Agent by Pascal Morabito. Focus, damn you. Uh, there it is, yep, good. Pascal Morabito. All right, um, this reminds me a lot in the opening of uh, costume National Ohm. Uh, however, the cloves are there, yes, but this is, uh, whilst Costume National stays in the spicy lane, this actually goes to a smoky sort of area. And there's, there's a lot of smoke in the background, but it has also got this rubber sort of vibe. And the bottle is also black and kind of rubberized, so I'm thinking that that was on purpose. Now, some people can't get past that smell because probably that's what their skin chemistry actually projects the most but on me I get some I get the clove I get a little bit of that rubbery aspect but I get a lot of smoke which I really like unfortunately just like the previous one the Vera Wang one this really doesn't last very long so you definitely definitely have to overspray and spray your clothes very nighttime kind of scent this one and I'd probably say in the dead of winter really good I would definitely recommend this cheap as chips and I don't I don't think I've heard anyone talk about this. Anyone. Black Agent. So I think most people who uh, talk about Pascal Morabito might be talking about uh, Or Black, because that's the popular one. But I went with this one, Black Agent, because it seemed pretty intriguing. And I'm mostly satisfied with the purchase, hoping that there was a little bit more smokiness to it and that it lasted a little bit longer than it currently does. But them's the breaks for about 25 bucks a bottle or 22 bucks a bottle that this was full presentation delivered. And the very last one in this list is my very most, most secret, most secret, but not as cheap, but still the most gemmy of all gems. And that is because of a few things. And I'm gonna show you what it is first. Uh, this is uh, La Petite Robe Noire by Guerlain. Uh, Black Perfecto. Okay. The reason... Mm, my God. All right. 
the reasons, the reasons why this is at the number nine spot, or let's say my number one spot, because if I was counting down, but I'm not smart enough to count down, so I'm counting up. Uh, the reason why this is at the very end is because of a few things, is because this is targeted and marketed for women, and it actually suits men a lot better in my view. The other reason is that it is a better version of Guerlain's L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum because it still has that cherry, it still has an almond. The almond is actually being tamed by the cherry and the cherry is not a sweet glacé cherry, however it is a sour cherry, which I prefer a lot more over something sweet because I'm sweet enough as it is, I think. And it's got that powdery sort of undertone and dries down really, really well with a little bit of a smoky sort of element on me as well, which I really, really really enjoy on this one and I would say it projects really well at the very beginning and it lasts the distance. Now this is a smaller bottle, this is a 30 ml bottle and I did pick this up for like 30 bucks. I think the bigger bottles are more expensive but I think given the application or or the, the versatility and this isn't all that versatile, the versatility you wouldn't really be reaching for it as much but when you do you will stand out and people will be like what is that because they won't be expecting you to be wearing this. Who's recommended this as a cheap hidden gem? Who? Who? Anyone? No? Okay, good. So yeah, that's it. That's my that's my number one or my number nine. One, num number something. But anyway, and that's it. That's the video. I hope you like that list and I hope you like the thought that I've put in curating that list. And as always, thanks for watching.